Hooker's Blades. Hey everybody, back again, and today we are finishing up this knife right here. As you can see, I have already done a good amount of the work on getting this fitted up. It's glued together. These are the new resin scales that I've been making. Uh, this is my first set from the casting system that I have. But yeah, looks pretty cool. Black veins running through like a rusty red. And uh, today I'm gonna finish this knife handle up and we're gonna do some testing with this knife. And if we get to it, I'm gonna start grinding the knife I forged in the last video. I do not have the handle scales cast for those. I've been drawing up the designs. So I'm probably gonna cast those either in this video or just afterwards. And if I have enough time before this video needs to go up, then I'll get that one stuffed in with footage. So let's get to it. So we're gonna fire up the four x 36 and start hogging off all the excess on the spine with a 120 grit abrasive belt, shredder belt from Combat Abrasives. And we're also gonna give it some shape on the base to form a secondary grip on the bottom section of this handle. It's gonna be a long handle with two grip points, one up high, one down low for choppy chops. Now, as you can see, I'm going to start grinding away those pins. The trick here is to just keep throwing some water on them every once in a while to keep them from getting too hot where they're going to start melting a hole in my epoxy. Um, because the last thing I want to do is melt my handle scales that I had to wait 72 hours to cure. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and changed the layout of my grinder so that way I can get into these nice corners and make some really nice contours for the fingers for the handle without too much fuss because that rat tail guard does tend to get in the way. Now that we've got our contours knocked in all nice and comfortable, we're going to kind of thin up where the handle heads towards the blade just to make that transition a little smoother so it's not so blocky at the top of the handle. that out of the way we can start to dremel away all of the excess in the areas that we could not get with that 4x36. 4x36 belt sanders are awesome but they just can't reach everywhere that a dremel can. We're just going to use a stone bit so that way we can grind away the excess metal as well as that excess um, resin. This was a long process because I wanted to make everything fit nice and comfortably while also making it look very sleek and getting a nice tight fit up on all of the places where the tang meets the metal. I've gone ahead and sped the footage up about 7-8 times so that way you guys don't have to sit through the 45 minutes that it actually took for this. A couple of pieces of advice when working with resin handles. Always wear a respirator. You do not want to breathe in all the dust that this creates. As you can see, it's like a snow field. It's like uh, Scarface threw up all over my knife handle right now. So make sure you're wearing a respirator and at least some form of eye protection because this stuff flies around a lot and the last thing you want is a piece of metal in the eye. Ask me how I know. Now that we're finished with the Dremel, we can match it up with some 120 grit sandpaper wrapped around a piece of round bar steel just to give me a nice grip so I can hit all those contours. And this is just to clean up all the little nips that the Dremel tool puts in it, as well as smooth the whole thing up so it matches the rest of what I ground on the 4x36. Again, I sped the footage up because this took a good bit of time. If you're wondering what is holding it in the vise there, I have some packing foam that I put in between the jaws of my vise just so I don't scratch up the blade that I spent forever polishing. Hand sanding as a knife maker is definitely the longest and most tedious process. However, it is the most worthwhile because it lets you get everything lined up clean and get rid of all your scratches, which is the most important thing in a finish. Without further ado, 
ladies and gentlemen, the acrylic handle. We're just going to rehydrate it on the surface here with some WD-40 to get all that dust off of it and show its true colors, so to speak. After this, I did buff it, and the final results are as follows. So we have our finished handle, all shaped. It is a double grip, so you've got a high grip up here and a lower grip for putting the weight more forward for chopping purposes, like if you're splitting wood. Uh, this is the first set of acrylic scale handles um, on a knife that I have made and turned out great. I did use some epoxy for another client and a spare knife that's up on my shop, but I don't really count those because those were uh, made with a different epoxy, not an acrylic. So if you'd like to get your hands on this, it will be up on my shop once I'm done. Um, it is finished now, but I am going to go test it and we'll see how it performs before I throw it up on the uh, good old Etsy store. So let's see how this thing cuts. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. I'll try something a little bigger, big old two liter. I think I pulled that one at the last second, but it's literally just, oh, there it goes. It's hanging on by the fabric of the, the label, rather. <laughs> See if I can get the label with this one. And for this, I'm actually gonna grip it on the rear just to give it more bite, too. See how that does. That's what we're looking for. Cut's good. Now, if you've seen my channel before, you would know what's about to happen with this stump here. Uh, subscribe so that way, uh, if this breaks, it's actually worth something to have this video up. Hit a like if, uh, if it survives. Hit a dislike if it doesn't survive. I don't care. But uh, you know, let's see how well this knife does. A little dirty, but there's no damage to that edge. That's still pretty dang sharp. Now uh, let's go chop some, some kindling with it. As you can see, there's not a single scratch or deflection on this blade. It's a little dirty. And uh, I'm gonna go clean it up, then we'll go from there. So when I clean up a knife after use, I usually just use some WD-40, give it a little spritz, and then kind of let it just soak into whatever has made it dirty, like all this wood. And then uh, just wipe the blade off. Easy as that. So all in all, the blade turned out really nice. Nice and cleaned up, sharpened, shined. This thing uh, does work. That handle turned out really beautiful. Really cool, deep colors in that thing. Solid acrylic, so it's nice and strong, nice and durable and waterproof. And this will be up on my Etsy store at etsy.com slash shop slash hookers blades. Uh, that's it for this time. And uh, until next time, God bless. Love you guys. Stay sharp out there. This is the part of the video where I tell you guys that the project is finished and it's all shiny and sharp, but I'm pretty sure you guys can tell that for yourself. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the finished knife down in the comment section, and if you guys have suggestions on a blade I should do, throw them down there for me.